everyone. Uh, thank you for he being here in the morning uh, session. I am absolutely delighted to be here in the tracks of the AMLD. I think it's a great conference. I appreciate the content, the quality of the track and the hospitality. And in particular, I'm excited to talk about uh, this uh, topic that has been the core of my research. Uh, I started postdoc in 2006, seven, and, uh, and since 2009 until today, I've been working on how to convert mobile phone traces and all sorts of the traces, digital traces we leave for a purpose. And the purpose is urban planning. And uh, let me tell you what was the, the state of the art before the new type of traces came into the picture. And uh, still in some sectors, this conversion to the new data set has, has not happened. What I'm showing here is a traffic demand model made by a software. This is a, a Canadian one, it's called Dynamic. And this is the type of software, it's called travel demand model. And that is what the cities use to all sort of uh, permissions regarding uh, new constructions uh, in transportation and in land, basically. And how this was done is an input set of parameters in which they ask the people, a representative sample of the population, where they go every day. And then they need to synthesize to everybody. And the way they did that is in these surveys, they create activity generator, and then based on what is the one, one day of the person look like, they did a route and mode planner that created a micro simulator that was then calibrated with observations. Most of the observations were loop detector in the streets. And this, uh, the core detail of this research is that made assumptions that people maximize their utilities. They are gonna uh, try to go to the shortest place and so on and so forth. And a lot of uh, implications to go from a typical example that is, a, for example, in the city of Boston, we have 30,000 people from household, 10,000 households to synthesize 6 million people. And then uh, the question that the research and what I'm going to be showing you is, if we need an urban model, which means the where and when an entire population, and that is important because we are modeling and planning for the use of a space. It can be occupancy of buildings or streets. Then we need to model everybody. Uh, what do we need? So basically, with, and then the question is with this type of traces. Of course, as the most ubiquitous are, as Edward Snow that say, clearly say yesterday, and he was absolutely right, the phone data, tell the whereabouts of uh, people, and then that really saves a lot of the information. There. But we also have uh, Twitter. This is a smartphone. I'm going to make the distinction of what is the so-called smartphones or location-based services versus antenna data, that is CDR, call detail records, or credit cards. What I've been doing in the set of my research, how you convert this set of tools to represent a sample of the entire population and model a complete uh, location of individuals, or to have a new uh, generation of urban demand models. And my role has been uh, teaching uh, students how to do this, and they go and work into IT companies, but also uh, foundations and uh, metropolitan planning organizations. The key message of this slide is that because the data is incomplete, we, need, we needed to change paradigm. Meaning we, didn't, we could not assume who was the person traveling because we could not validate and what exactly the person was doing. So we needed to do a lot of inference. And what I'm gonna show you the, the key component and the beauty of this is that human have a lot of predicted movement, a lot of predictabilities with some randomness. And with that, with a complex system approach, we detect the essential human mobility patterns and we created the least amount of parameters possible to create these models that then they can enrich with computer science know-how and with extra information that can be extracted either from the phone or from the map. But we try to do this model with a minimum amount of information. Then I'm gonna show you how we, we created a model. Uh, 
we first said would be a control experiment and then how we do it with this passively collected data. And the control experiment is data available for researchers that is uh, from here, from Europe, from Denmark, the sensible DTU data set that they track uh, for two years, uh, 800 students and they knew everything. So basically to teach, uh, or honestly, the generation that are gonna be using this data, we need to uh, gather the data ourselves and do control experiments and then do things. Then here we have in Denmark where the students go and then because it's two years and there is a relatively wealthy sample, they travel all over uh, the place. We are gonna be using here this only for urban scale mobility when you go and you have your place of a sleep in the same city. And then here we go uh, into the models, of course, for the purpose of a 25 minute talk, I'm not gonna give you the exact details, but I'm gonna give you the reference and the main bytes of this. So the important aspect of people is that they, at every time step, they stay where they are or they choose to move. And they choose to move, basically, you are gonna do an exploration or a location that is not in your data set before, or you are gonna go to a return to where you were before. Then you explore or you go to a, a place that you were already before. And then the hard question is, if you're gonna explore, we need to make a location that was not observed in the data set. And normally the training algorithms train from your history. Then in the explorations, we need to come with some creative way to do that. And of course, the other aspect we needed to do is, what are the rates? What is the probability that uh, right now you're gonna leave my talk, you are gonna come back and all these things. By the way, the important thing is the resolution of the story. And this is a resolution that is every 400 meters in a space, every 10 meters in time. Meaning it's not the walking within building, it's you can think more block to block type of mobility. That is what we need for the urban planning purpose. Then, basically what we did is, a, and you can see the details in this paper, we fit in red, in red we have the rates that are individually uh, informed and we have some aspect that is global. You can see what is a global or universal style of parameters is the probability, this is what we call the circadian rhythm. The probability that you're gonna leave a place depend on the hour of the day and we inform it aggregating the population. These three rates uh, control uh, staying in a location, moving to a new exploration, and how many departures, individual departures you have. Then it's uh, heterogeneous because it depends on the population. And a very interesting one is this rate that uh, is controls what is the preferential return to a place you already visited. And that is uh, basically uh, the more visits you have, the more, the less likely it is that you're going to, to find a return. So in other ways, you can weight the locations you visit by the amount we saw the person there. And this is one over K, it's like a CIF law. And finally, another type of ranking also with CIF law is the collective way, that is how we choose people for that we use point of interest. So basically, if I am here, I'm gonna allocate the exploration of us with the maps, and I see in the, if it's an exploration and we see the number of locations we have, we rank where the person is gonna be. With this absolutely new way, new way to uh, model people, we could create, and remember, this is a control experiment. Here I'm showing you time and uh, the location, and here is the zoom in the space-time diagram of a person. And the typical approach in computer science and with the papers in computer science were about how much you match the location of the individuals. And I can tell you, for example, for the Danish data set, 70% of their locations were visited only once. Then you cannot really, uh, you cannot even hope to predict where I'm gonna go next. However, then here I'm uh, saying the predicted locations in terms of a computer science algorithm is not good, but that's okay. We have that uh, percentage of explorations. And basically by domain knowledge, I measure what was interesting the planning uh, community about. And the planning community was interesting precisely in disaggregated uh, distributions. That is, this is one of the students, and then you see the histograms of the different days. And as you can see, this is a commuter. 
Then this is the person and the synthetic person, and we have the average, uh, these daily networks, we call it motif, and then we have this type of thing is the daily visit the location, the majority of the days this commuter visited two, and some days visit even 10 uh, blocks in the city. We have how long the stay, the typical stay time in the different visited locations, the ranking, because you have the few locations that you visited, uh, the rank one you visited a lot, then you spend your time in very few locations, and there are a few that you visited uh, many, uh, the rank 10 you only visited once. And at the end, what, of course, if you are ranking the explorations and the returns properly, the distribution of travel times is pretty good. And this peak, you reproduce the commuting distance. So we have this way with the rates and the patterns to create the model of the individual. And here is how it looks like when we do this, not with the absolute control experiment, and this is a scary uh, <laughs> a slide in terms of privacy. This is one person. Then there is one aspect when you need to parse the state locations. You need to impute home and work. And then after you impute all these visits, is that you do the, uh, the model of the returns and explorations to create the entire model. Then what do we do? This is LBS data into mobility models. And then what we need to gather from the data, from the users that are active enough to inform me the rates about uh, their visitation patterns, we have the distribution. And this is with the Danish student. This is with the data from triangulated mobile phone data. Then this is in Boston. This is in Denmark. And then basically what we have is we form the model with active users and complete the trajectories of a not active user. This is an example of a not active user in which we only have 30 records in an entire day. But this is rank. We know that he, this person visits a lot of these places, likely these are home and work. And then we need to, with a given set of parameters taken from the distribution, to create this synthetic version of the people. And why we need this? Because for planning purposes, we need the synthetic version of someone. That someone have the same visited locations per day, the same stay time distribution, the distance travel, and the rank of location. Of course, the explorations are a guess, our best guess informed by the data. And that's how we created these models. And what we did next is bring it back to the, uh, what I show you in the second slide, that is the demand models. Then it's not too hard. Here we have call detail record, homeward, town pair, flows in Boston, and what the uh, commuting transportation planning package had. This is what I call the accepted truth by the transportation planners. Then this is the flows, it's calling transportation called OD, or in destination matrices that are the a holy grail of what the transportation industry wants to do. And then after you have this fantastic of this informed by 2 million people versus the survey of 30 million, we have way more advantages for the calibration of the observations of the traffic. Then we were lucky to start publishing transportation. And for me, the key component was when in 2015 or 16, I forgot when, the Transportation Research Board Academy took it for pr practitioners. They wrote a survey. So this is how we can uh, convert this data into this type of information. And then let me tell you not now how we use it. Then we use it, for example, uh, to measure the volume in the streets. And now you can play something that Google Map doesn't play, that is playing the role of the central planner. What this means is that we calculate the cost of volume in a street, and then you can have a, the lambda zero is people is going to optimize the cost, then you can put all the cars optimizing the cost. This is a user equilibrium. Then everybody taking the shortest time. But if you do know the demand of everybody, what we do is that you can do for some value of lambda between zero and one, in which you do not let the street fills, and then you can distribute the demand. But what's the caveat of all this? The caveat of all this is that some people would use the Google Map route, and some people need to do sacrifices. Then with this, the industry and the lift of the world, given all, as soon as you have the demand of everybody, you can have a way 
to distribute the demand. And then what we see here is we have some people that sacrifice minutes and some people that benefit, and it's asymmetric. And with number of vehicles, the travel times is not tremendous, but for congestion and emissions, this matters. Then the type of things we could do uh, for, oops, something happened here. Can you put it back? Yes. Probably I, uh, let me go to the side. Go down, down, down. Uh, at, oh. Yeah, we were here. <laughs> Perfect, okay. Then the type of things we could do is, uh, in particular scenarios, for example, combining more data for events, we were able to try this in Rio de Janeiro for the Olympics. There was the moment in which people wa were willing to change their habits. Then we having the demand, we could say, which fraction of the user? So, of course, we needed to add all sort of data extra, like where the tourists were going to be, where the games were going to be, the reduced capacity, etc. But at the end of the day, the type of things we did is showing the commuters that would go from these locations to these locations that would benefit for using the transit. And with this target information, we could have a much better decrease in the travel time that by sending people to metro out of the car randomly, which is this horrible amount. So that's why the play by number a decrease of congestion do not work. You need to have target demand to know where are the places that are gonna be filled, where is the people that you need targetly to send out of the cars. And finally, uh, two minutes. Uh, I'm going to show you the example in something is not about the past because the people that is driving is already driving. A fantastic opportunity for everybody doing research on this is on planning electric cars. The electric cars are coming and when we measure actual data, as you see the flavor, this data is about doing data driven models at urban scale to plan for that. What I'm going to show you the example of planning something that is not adopted yet, that is electric cars. Then we use easy charge data to see how the charging station users uh, work. And I can tell you, and this is so important from now on when you talk about electric cars, we're talking even about autonomous cars. This is 400 users in a charging station in, in the Bay Area. And what you see here is because they have the charging station at work, you have the commuting peak in the morning enters into the power grid. That cannot be sustained. Then what we did is, feeding with Bayesian statistic, the model of, we have the phone data model and we did not know who were mobile phone users, but we could know, for example, how many users we had, uh, what is the income of our users and what is the distance. Then knowing this from uh, report data, we impute electric vehicle users given the income and given the distance of our mobile phone users. And we knew the percentage of current electric cars, and then we have simulated EV, and this is the car vehicle rebate program EVs per uh, census. To give you an idea, 300 EVs is the people that have the most, and most of the zip codes have much less than that. Then what we need to go, you go into this a typical method from engineering is mixed interlinear uh, programming, and what you have, this is the charging station. What we want is to minimize the peak demand that I showed you before taking into account that the people cannot just arrive and charge and leave and charge when you tell them. That's why the mobile uh, uh, data was useful for. And fantastic, of course, if people would change only 15 minutes, one hour, up to one hour, this is how we change the peak. And this is very important information if we change the technology of electricity. Right now, people arrive, and plug like it would be water. But if we can manage a smart charging within the station without people having to leave, you can change the peak all this. Then we could see, okay, how we change behavior, what would be the monetary benefit, and it's about $2,000 if people are, have some flexibility in an hour, but this $2,000 is per month for a station of 400 people. Then it's a coffee per day. But you may want to do the raffle and play and be, you know, the green person that wants to play this game for a competition of about $2,000 among 400. We can do what is called serious game. At the end of the day, in urban computing, 
everything has to do with the adoption. When we want to plan is the adoption of the metro, the adoption of the EV charging scheme, it is where computational urban science meets computational social science. It's about behavior, but what keep making me work in this uh, world is that people, where I'm doing the models for, they have devices. We can do the entire demand, we can do the model, we can plan and then give the solutions that are for social good, because it's the tragedy of the commons after all. Then I hope I convince you that with, with big data, we can generate our own scale mobility models. We can cluster individuals and the social uh, networks in a space and design recommendations for collecting well-being. And with infrastructure demand, we can plan traffic and the introduction of new technologies such as electric cars. And with that, that is everything I have for today. And I ate the minutes of my questions, I think. <laughs> Thank you.